What is it, like day nine or something? First sale change. First sale change. <laughs> Not so bad. The winds come more out of the northeast, huh? Yeah. And so in order to maintain our course... All the way up. We've got to pull the pole down and then run under like a normal jib. Bring them out, sail. Coming out. We are really jamming. The wind's beautiful, about uh, 15 to 20, right on the beam, and Delos is making awesome speed. We have 200 miles to go. So if we can average eight knots, we'll make it to the river just before sundown. The sun's been getting a little bit later as we move west, the sunset. So that's cool. It's almost uh, eight o'clock right now. Sunset should be just after eight. Let me show you the conditions. Seas are building though. We're moving. Previously on Delos, we pick up the hook and say goodbye to our amazing Brazil. That's it! We're no longer touching Brazil. We try to dive a reef in the middle of nowhere and have an equator crossing ceremony for blue. Ah. <laughs> you must swim from the bow of Delos to the ladder, up onto the deck, and you must do it naked. Started blowing like 35 or 40 knots, and according to the the gribs, we should be pretty much entering the ITCZ, which is the inner tropical convergence zone, where the high from the North Atlantic and the high from the South Atlantic kind of meet. And in between, you have a, a big area of kind of unsettled wind and weather and, and squalls. It'll go from stuff like this to zero knots. So you kind of have everything in between and it's really hard to predict. But man, I wasn't expecting rain and 35, 40 knots on, on my watch. These swells are picking up and we're surfing down these waves. Holy shit, 14.8, 14.9 knots. What the f Just walked out here. We got it. <laughs> Another bucket full of water yeah, just came through this hatch. Like so much water. There the whole passage except for today. Oh Ryan man! Just, caught, like, just, just moved like a minute ago. And I just fixed that hatch too. What's wrong with it? <laughs> Not seething. Funny though. After watching, we were just watching holes fast and like. <laughs> They're, yeah. they're so salty. They're so that gross. <laughs> they're like, all the salt water on our stuff. <laughs> the whole boat is full of fucking salt water. <laughs> right there. <laughs> the whole back is <laughs> And the it's hatches, like whole... the, it was the, the latches were closed yeah. all the way. They are not closed all the way, though. Yeah. Right now? That's no. Good. What do you mean? I mean, I don't think this, is, this isn't a cause from not being reefed. It's just a rogue wave. But if you feel like reefing, we can reef. Oh, okay. Ah, f***ing dumping rain! Oh. 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 Oh
to round up. So we gotta get that visited. Oh, where did that come from? Really, hang on. We gotta come up to be able to furl it. Hold that sheet, Kevin. Alright, ready? Yep. Guys, it ease a bit. Ease a bit. Okay. Okay. No more on that all, bro. That's good. No, we're coming around. Okay, coming back around. All good. Okay. I don't know what happens. <laughs> Or the Maybe the autopilot. Can I tighten this more? No, you're okay there. Okay, oh, that was not nice at all. But I can't even see anything. And hopefully we have no more of those until we're there, huh? How's that? Whew! I haven't had, it. had a squall drill in a long time. Good job, everybody. Nice work. That was a good 40 something at least. Yeah, it was at least 40. Yeah. Because oh I was God. I was running downwind and we were going over 10 knots and the true wind was like, or the apparent wind was 35. Yeah. So it was like 40, 45. That's why it was such a bitch. Take that, hold fast. <laughs> Just kidding. I can't <laughs> see <laughs> anything. <laughs> Oh, no, that was so there. cold! <laughs> that was a bit of a hectic night watch. We're doing really good speed. We put out some more sails now just to kind of keep us going. We would like to get in there tomorrow before the sun sets. And it's very tat with time, <laughs> like always. We hopefully we'll make it in, but we need to keep a little bit of speed up, so... Seeing some rain around. But like I'm a rain jacket on. Yeah. Good good thing. Just in case. It's the first time I've seen this this door shut while sailing on bellows. I know. It's not nice. Uh -uh. At least nothing broke that we know of. Yeah, that we know. We just have to check the generator tomorrow. It just makes me have so much respect for people who sail around single-handed or even just with like two people I don't know and and if they don't feel good and they're going through a storm or something like you you have to deal with it so it just makes me have a lot of respect for those people good morning it's uh just after 2 a.m and I think everybody did really good earlier when the wind went crazy and that squall hit us you know you're on a boat with a bunch of sailors when everybody's laying in bed except the person in watch and uh, the boat changes like the motion changes and then everybody all of a sudden is out of bed and we all sort of met at the companionway at the same time which I thought was really cool. People are just paying attention to like how the boat feels and the noises and the sounds and that's awesome. I haven't had a squall like that in a long time. I can't even remember when the last one was and it basically just went from, you know, 15 to 20 knots to I think it was probably 35 initially, like all of a sudden. And then it built to just over 40 knots, something like that. And we had full sail up, set for downwind. And the situation now is uh, we are about 140 miles away from the entrance to the river. Get to the river before 8 p.m. boat time, which is when the sun is setting. And if we can do that, then we'll just tuck uh, in a little anchorage around the first corner, sleep for a few hours, wait till daylight, and if the tide is favorable, then we'll head up river after that. But in order to do it, we need to average uh, nine knots i think that puts us there by 6 p.m if we go 10 knots we get in at 4 p.m which we're doing most of the time actually which is awesome only time will tell okay we'll see good night it's 
been such a cool passage, uh, very chill for most of the way, and we've seen some really cool stuff, and, but um, I'm feeling really beat down, honestly. I know it's only been like 10 or 11 days, but I don't know, I just haven't really been able to sleep, and I haven't been feeling that good, and um, I don't know. I'm just excited to get there <laughs> and like have a calm anchorage and a good night's sleep. I'm very, I'm ready. I'm not usually ready, ready at the end of passages, but this one I am, so. How far do we have left, Brian? 49.5 miles. We started motor sailing because the wind dropped a little bit and our speed came down. It is noon right now, boat time. I think regular local time is like 11. Yeah, like one hour difference. So we'll get in there uh, 6 p.m., which corresponds with high tide. Yeah, that's it. Good passage so far. The color of the water has changed as well. Kind of greenish instead of deep blue. Are you excited to get there? Yeah, I'm very excited. I need to stretch my legs. Yeah. Sleep for a night. I think we should do a mission. No. Like have one specific mission. I want to order Tarantula. I'd like to find some eggs Benedict as well. Well, well, we can well, make that. This mission is expanding. You think they have expanded in French Guiana? I think you can make it better yourself. Yeah. But then when you make it, you realize how much butter goes into it. It doesn't taste as good. Well, that's... <laughs> you know? I bet we can research vegan expanded. Ooh, we might not be very good. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna watch. I'll go outside now. I think Kaza said something about the trash. Oh, what happened, Kaza? The trash, we put it in the dinghy because we were lazy and didn't want to put it away. And now it's been laying in water and sunshine for like a week and this completely disintegrated. Good. Disgusting. Disgusting. Oh. Yeah. oh, and my new Javianas too. Yeah. Fuck. That's the reason we didn't want to put it in the trash locker because we have extra fuel in there and it wouldn't fit. And we were afraid we are going to rip the bags. And now look what happens. Shame. Six more hours and we should enter the river. Mark in sight. It's a red marker. We should keep that one to starboard. And then the ones after that should be green.
got 4.5 meters of water under us and the tide is supposed to drop about two meters. Look at this place. It's crazy. Wow. It's like a mist in the trees and it's so different from the places we've been to so far and it's just like so calm and jungle. It's really exciting. It's exciting to be in a new place. I'm really happy that we made it and that we made it in today. And the sounds of the jungle. It's so calm. We found our you hear that? Nothing except Brian talking <laughs> and the engine. <laughs> this is where we're gonna call home for the night. Look at this. It's like a little creek. Should be deep enough. And it's so calm. Dallas has been rocking and rolling for like 20 days since leaving Recife. Too long. Now we're flat still. We found 4.5 meters of water. The tide is high. We've got 4.5 under us now, bro. <laughs> Perfect. Give me a couple touches on that anchor. Okay, hook's ready. Ready? Ready. Drop it. Hasn't happened in a long time. What happened there? I never um, seen you do that. The if we're healed over a lot, there's a pile of chain that sits there and it falls over on itself. Oh no! And it gets kind of. Did. Do you need my help? Okay. So, to a successful passage, an excellent crew, even during the crazy squall we had last <laughs> night. Cheers. Woo! Cheers. 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 For the 1,400 miles in nine days. I think it was like, <sighs> you got the young Uh-huh. Oh, I think I bling. <laughs> oh, <dang. laughs> Boom! Maybe write boom at the top. Boom. French Giana. Boom! Ready, brother? Ready! Show me your morning smile. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> the Moroni River runs through prime South American rainforest, and its origin is way up in the Tumac Human Mountains. The river is 330 nautical miles, that's 612 kilometers in length, and discharges 1.7 million liters of water every second into the Atlantic Ocean. It's pretty big. The Moroni River is actually a border between two neighboring countries, with French Guiana to the east and Suriname to the west. The little information we had said to favor the French bank, keeping it to port, as the water there ran a little deeper and there is actually a marked channel. The town of San Laurent du Moroni is the largest city in the area, boasting a population of 25,000 people. It's the third largest city in the country, but that's not really saying so much, since the entire population of French Guiana is only about 250,000 people. Because Suriname is so close, there's a customs and immigration post right on the river, which is where we hope to clear into the country. Marina SLM, Marina SLM, this is sailing yacht Delos, Delos, over.
So Brady and Alex are gonna take the dinghy and go in for a little reconnaissance mission and see where the morning is and stuff. We haven't gotten much direction, right? Except that it's here. No, they haven't answered the radio yet. But I think we can just take any free mooring. Yeah. Okay. It's a bit too shallow here, huh? Yeah, we only have 1.8 under us and the tide probably drops too. What a funny little place. Oh, this hide? Oh, it feels so good to be here. It's amazing. It's always excited to explore a new place too. It's Jacques Cousteau Jr. out here. Hey, Felipe! Hey guys, what's up, man? <laughs> Say that. I was just thinking, we gotta take our Brazil flag down. Oh yeah, let's do that. Let's take that down. <laughs> We're no longer in Brazil. Ta -da. Oh, this is so sad. Muito Brazil. Muito. Muito prazer, Brazil. It's got a little bit of use on it. Yeah. Add that to the collection. <laughs> Don't quote me on any of this, but from what I've been reading, this area, like French Guiana and Suriname, is really, really diverse for a bunch of reasons. It was fought over, battled over between the Dutch and the British for a long time, and the French. And then there's the like slaves that got brought over from Africa, basically. And then they like revolted and mixed with the local Indians and made them Maroons. So there's this like crazy mix of like Dutch, French, English, uh, Indonesian, and maroon, like local Indian and African here. Wow. So it's this crazy mixing pot of a bunch of different cultures and languages and foods and all kinds of things. Very different than Brazil already. First impressions of this spot. <laughs> this one's playing drums at like 8.30 on a Friday morning. <laughs> well, what's up with that? I don't know, it looks chill. I think we'll set up the sunshade first of all, try and keep the boat cool. Yeah. We're a little bit offshore. Hey, that's my French Guiana dance. Get it, get it. <laughs> oh, here we go. Immigration, get legal in the country. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. There it is. No, 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 no. No, that's no, no, sorry. Saint Laurent. No, no, no. So where is that? New Laurent. The ATM. They use euros here. Yeah. Imagine that. A euros. We got some. And get a SIM card. Okay. What do you think about that? Sure. <laughs> everything, everything just shuts in the middle of the day and. The old orange office with like a queue of three people, it'll take two hours to get there. Yep. <laughs> sure. So we add beer to that in that list? Beer. You're right. Beer. That's a given though, huh? Yeah. Sounds like we're in for an adventure. I've never been to a country that's not Spanish speaking besides Brazil. And within the first 10 minutes of walking around, it's like, you can't say anything. Like, I don't even know how to say, I don't speak French. <laughs> or like, can I take your photo? Or excuse me, or sorry, or thank you, or anything. I'm gonna have to start studying at least the basics of French. Definitely very vibey here. I like it. I know it's always really nice coming into French territories. Like the French always get really cool spots and they always have the same vibe no matter where you're in the world the french territories are just really chill and like just have a good life this is the best part about traveling in french countries you can get a big baguette for about not even one euro right so we buy that a little bit of ham and some cheese and just we just gotta find the local veggies so today me and brian are just going to the market it's a kind of fresh fruit and veg market and we just arrived so it's really cool to kind of stock up on a little bit of vegetables because we're really running low. They didn't have anything in Laronia, hardly. Just no. like a few things. So it's no gonna salt. be really cool. You're gonna see what they have. So it's 
really cool to go to local markets like this because it's a little bit different. They actually have a lot of cool stuff. And it's unrefrigerated. Yeah, unrefrigerated and the only problem is that half of the stuff I don't really know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and our French numbers suck. Yeah. <laughs> we lost all of our French skills. <laughs> so you're still doing a little bit, but so far I think we're good. Cat. Cat. Do. You know that one. People really don't like having their videos yeah. shot around here. They didn't seem to mind about the GoPro. No, but the big camera, they don't like. Okay, I feel weird. I'm gonna stop. I think we saw breadfruit over here and we haven't seen one of those in like a long time. This is breadfruit and we haven't had breadfruit for like... When's the last time we had breadfruit, bro? Oh, man. A long time. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna prepare it. Our favorite method, which is pan frying it. And it's perfectly ripe and it is freaking delicious. Breadfruit originated in the South Pacific, which is where we first saw it, and from there spread to the rest of the world. It's high in carbohydrates and is a great source of antioxidants and vitamins. The ripe fruit has a sweet, musky, custard like flavor, and when baked, has the consistency of bread. But I like to fry it, which makes it more like a potato. What kind of feast is going on out here? Broccoli. We found broccoli in the store. Oh, that's exciting. I haven't had broccoli since Cape Town. Yeah. Since a long time ago. And even then it wasn't very often. And also Brian fried up this breadfruit, which is delicious. It's so much better than fries. So much it better. is. That and yeah. cassava or manioc. Mm, much better. Thanks to the French. Peace de la resistance. Pork chops. This wow. is like a, a family American meal, huh? Look at those chops. We got, we got meat. It's the breadfruit. <laughs> we got veggies. That's a huge piece of meat. <laughs> mm, good, huh? Right I haven't had pork chops in a long time. Mm. And broccoli. Yum. Amazing. Next up on Delos, we explore deep into the jungle visit a village in Suriname, and watch the European Space Agency launch an Ariane 5 rocket. Okay, go. I'm going on the wrong throat. <laughs> the wrong throat. <laughs> you like it? I like it a lot. That's kind of how Brady dances. No, Brady dances like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, spin! Oh, go Brian from... dances like this. Yeah, that's pretty smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see those facial expressions. <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> that's it? Drum circle. <laughs> <laughs> 